Welcome to Gray Propaganda, where we discuss the lies, falsehoods, and politics of the mainstream media. I will cut through the propaganda and summarize the news for you daily. Today, we have an article from HuffPo. J.D. Vance is spreading a new racist lie about Haitians by Nathalie B- Baptiste. They write, Vance's original lie has been proven wrong time and time again, but now he's back with a new one. Now, let me tell you what it is and cut through all the clickbait of Po Bull. All right. It's diseases like HIV and tuberculosis. Haitians have a huge amount of both, but apparently it's racist to point that out. In a town of under 60,000 people, almost 20,000 Haitians have moved in to Springfield. Here are some interesting facts about the Haitians that moved in. According to our own U.S. government health websites, around 2% of the total population in Haiti have HIV, and 159 out of 100,000 have TB, all right, tuberculosis. Uh, 14% of TB patients also were HIV positive. In America, 1.2 million out of 333 million people have HIV, or roughly less than a third of a percent a small fraction compared to Haiti, which almost certainly goes underreported over there. Also, fun fact, TB cases in America went up 16% uh, last year in 2023 from the year prior, and we have the highest amount ever recorded since 2013. Hmm, I wonder why that's happening. Which brings me to my point. There is no chance that you bring in 20,000 Haitians which have many, many times more cases of HIV and TB, and you don't have a measurable and discernible increase in disease. Now, remember those words while we dive into the video. The American media totally ignored this stuff until Donald Trump and I start talking about cat memes. If I have to, if I have to create stories so that the American media actually pays attention to the suffering of the American people, then that's what I'm going to do, Dana, because you guys are completely letting Kamala Harris coast. Sorry, you just said that you're creating the story. What's that, Dana? You just said that this is a story that you've yes. created. I say that we're creating a story, meaning we're creating the American media focusing on it. I didn't create 20,000 illegal migrants coming into Springfield thanks to Kamala Harris's policies. Her policies did that. But yes, we created the actual focus that allowed the American media to talk about this story and the suffering caused by Kamala Harris's policies. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. It's unfortunate uh, that this this came up. Let me tell you what we do know, though. What we know is that the Haitians who are in Springfield are legal. They came to Springfield to work. Ohio is on the move, and Springfield has really made a great resurgence with a lot of companies coming in. These Haitians came in to work for these companies. What the companies tell us uh, is that they are very good workers. They're very happy to have them there. And frankly, that's helped the economy.
Now, the article goes on to say the Republican vice presidential nominee has spent the last week repeatedly posting an X, formerly known as Twitter, that the Haitian immigrants in Springfield are causing a rise in communicable diseases, including HIV and TB. Uh, but that's not true, they say. Uh, there has been no measurable or discernible increase in diseases, according to Bruce Vanderhoff, director of the State Department of Health. The, the, the agency's website publishes data and on myriad of infectious uh, diseases and vaccine preventable diseases in the state and uh, also does not depict any noticeable rise. Now, I just don't believe it. I don't believe the data. They have 20,000 Haitians, which are known, known to have vastly higher rates of all forms of diseases, especially HIV and TB, when you immigrate them to a one location in America or wherever it is in one location, of course you're going to have a measurable and discernible increase in disease. The article continues with, um, infectious diseases are often prominent in poorer countries and regions because of lack of access to health care. But uh, despite Vance's connotations, uh, it's not because the people living in those countries are innately disease carriers or concoctions, excuse me. Um, there, Even they have to go around and eventually admit infectious diseases are more prominent in poorer countries and regions. They just are. It's a fact. Vance's lies about Haitians, the article continues with, aren't just scoring political points off of the most vulnerable among us, but are also echoing extremely dark episodes in history. During the Nazi regime, uh, German doctors falsely claimed that Jewish people were responsible for the spread of typhus and infectious diseases, uh, uh, infectious disease spreading by lice. Okay. Um, that would be a great point if Vance was telling lies, but he is not. So this all, uh, they're basically bringing up these facts to call him a Nazi, which they love to do, I'm sure. Um, in 1983, as the HIV epidemic took hold in the United States, the Centers for Disease Control announced which groups were more at risk, identifying them as homosexuals, heroin users, hemophiliacs, and Haitians, especially those who just arrived in America. Now, back in 1983, they didn't have to worry about the woke media, but eventually they had to change that uh, because they didn't want to single out a particular group. But we've known for decades and decades now that, especially in Haiti, but anywhere where you have an increase of these diseases, and you uh, have immigrants, illegal immigrants, who come to one point, especially when in these uh, communities that they set up, you're going to see an increase in disease. Now, the article ends with, uh, it was the first time in the history of modern medicine that a pathological condition was tied to a, a national group, according to author A. Naomi Pike. Uh, the CDC later removed Haitians uh, from its risk group, saying they were not actually more prone to the virus, but the damage was already done. In the 1990s, Haitian refugees seeking asylum in the U.S. were subjected to HIV slash AIDS screenings, and 200 HIV positive Haitian refugees were held at Guantanamo Bay. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time.